hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dragon Quest. So, today, I'm going to be playing a team that I mentioned in the, at the end of the last video. I, I usually, by the time I make one of these videos, I have my team planned for the next one already. It's just, it takes me a full, basically a full week to train up. And this time I actually put a little bit more effort into getting, like maximizing out the team than some of the other ones. And, I mean, it probably wasn't worth it. I have played quite a few games with this team off stream, just to try it out, get a feel for it. And because, you know, as soon as I finish a team, I want to play it, but I'm not always able to stream instantly, so. I'll just start going through each of the members individually. But essentially, like, the overall game plan here is... So last stream you saw me use the Cetacean Sorcerer, which is like the big the big whale mage looking guy. And where who he can cast a craggle anywhere from one to six times. And I thought that was a little too inconsistent. So my plan was to hopefully get two craggle users that are small. So you know you're guaranteed two casts every single time. And hope that it would be just more consistent. So Cumulus is, is honestly the favorite member of my team. It's kind of the... What I noticed also in last stream is I used Damselfly. And it was kind of just like a support with Selflessness and then Benefactor. Or Benefaction as one of its traits. So I was, But I really liked Benefaction. I think it's very strong. Because if you die, your entire team gets up like two stages of attack, defense, speed, and wisdom. So... It's kind of nuts. I went through and looked through all of the monsters that get Benefaction, and I decided that Cumulus was kind of the best one, because it gets Ultra Crafty Wusher. So essentially, you have something that can double as both a support and an offensive carry, which is kind of what I wanted to do with uh, Frostburn. So, I mean, this entire team is more or less improvement from what I did last time. Or at least I'm, I'm attempted improvement, I should say. Ace of Vader is just kind of a, an extra little bonus, but essentially it's just Benefaction and Extra Crafty Wisher that make this thing function. I have Hard Warder and Sparkling Warder on it, so that I can have some stun resist and then just a lot of status resists. If you look at its defensive stat chart, like it's pretty much immune to Ice and Electric unless you're facing a Ultra Crafty. Which, I mean, is very common for, for most carries, but it's just nice to have this many resists, because even with Ultra Crafty, you only take half damage from those elements. And since they're this, they seem to be the two most common elements in the game, it's just very valuable to have. My stun resist is 75, which is okay on a small monster. It's kind of hard to get a whole lot on a small. Uh, but the sleep is negative, which hurts, because sleep is almost more common than stuns right now, because so many people uh, like try and go for stun stun resist instead oh, and then I I did get sparkles on the whole team the cumulus sparkle I didn't spend hours and hours resetting but it was an HP so it's kind of like almost anti synergy with benefaction but I think it was still okay because what the end goal is is to make a team that doesn't have to rely on selflessness because when when I hit silver yesterday or last week, and I was trying some some matches. One of the biggest problems I ran into was when my opponents were spamming Disruption Wave, which actually cancels out dis uh, selflessness. So it's kind of like a one-for-one -one trade, but if two supports use moves, and then the opposing carry can just wipe my entire team, there's just no coming back from that. And I think Cumulus is like the best step towards that, and so having HP, even though it's okay, if it, it's a good thing if it dies, it's also a good thing if it doesn't, because Ultra Crafty Wisher makes it an offensive threat. That's kind of my thought. Next is the time being. This thing is pretty much <laughs> uh, mini Cetacean Sorcerer. I just I have Wisdom Booster 4 on it, Impactor, and then Hard Warder. Once again, for like Stun Resist. And just Status Resist. He's immune to water. You know, definitely a common element in this game. No, it's not. I'm, I'm immune to Confusion for the most part. And once again, good stun resist. And I even got a little bit of sleep resist on him, but not not great. And he's actually weak to electric, which kind of sucks. But the big things here is he's got insta ping, which is 
So the it seems like the stat changes are 1.8 times, which is huge. Like per stage. But I think it only goes up to two stages. I still haven't confirmed that because I haven't played a stat boost comp. But I think it only goes up to two stages. But having a 1.8 boost on all your spells is pretty insane. Unless it gets wiped. Magical Moment is another thing that I wanted to experiment with. Because if you intentionally take a hit or two and you survive with like low HP, then you can actually get a really insane chance for critical hits, which eliminate like all of your opponent's resistance and you deal a ton of damage. And then Zammeister just for really good single target damage on Kazamel. Not a whole lot of people build for Zam resist either. I guess some people kind of get it on just because it happens to be on Holy Warder, which is the anti-sleep one. But it's not a common element for sure. So yeah, it's a pretty simple spread. Impractor just gives me both both, both Kugcraggle and Kazamel. So which are the two main moves I'm going to click. Because Kazamel is, I have Zammeister for single target. And then Kugcraggle is just in case my opponents are going to spam selflessness. Oh, and then... I, once again, I didn't want to reset for sparkles forever. I ended up on an agility sparkle. So it, it, it's kind of nice to be able to... If I survive the turn, I get my first Kukragal off. And then I also get a potential second on the, the second turn. Next is Sorrow's Pawn. This thing took me forever to get with... Because I just got unlucky with eggs. Uh, sorry, I just went through and favorited everything. So his sparkle was actually in wisdom, which is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Once again, I think it's just the same set as the last guy, the time being. Just wisdom booster four, hard warder, and impactor. But this guy's actually got nope. I cannot click the right buttons at all. This guy has Ultra Crafty Cragger. He's also got Rando Ping, not quite as good as Insta Ping, but if it does get wiped, then it can just randomly pop up again, which is nice. And Critical Theorist, which is... it's okay. All three of these are are pretty strong, though. And then I just have a, even an extra Crafty Cragger, just from the, the ring, because I didn't farm for accessories. I did get some of the free ones you can find in the game, like the Socket Locket behind the wall, the hidden wall in the final dungeon. Once again, though, he's actually weak to Electric, but it does have decent resists all around. Nothing crazy, though. And then, this is when I actually swapped around. So initially I wasn't even planning on having this monster here and I was going to have the rabbit instead. But I was watching a couple high rank Japanese players and what I noticed is that they were running a monster with the trait tit for tat. So it's essentially, if you get hit with a status ailment, it goes on your opponent as well. It's like Synchronize from Pokemon, if you're familiar with that. The only, but what I've learned in my games is that stun actually doesn't count as a status ailment, which is what I was really hoping would happen. So if I get stunned, then I can also stun them back, but that's not the case. So as much hope as I had for this thing, it's not nearly as good. It is nice for countering sleep, paralysis, and confused spammers though, so stuff like the rabbit is really nice for dealing with that. Also worth mentioning that since this is a trait, just like personal grudge, it will actually go through resists. So even if you get hit with sleep and your opponent has 150 sleep resists, or even just 100, then it will, it will still sleep them. So it's very nice that way. And slick skin is, you know, every once in a while you get a miss. Basically, this guy just spams. He just spams selflessness. He's got sparkling water and holy water just for, for type resists. He's got the highest natural explosion resist in the game. Which I was okay. Outside of the slimes, <laughs> outside of the slimes, he's got the highest explosion resist in the game naturally, and so I he he absorbs like an explosion naturally. It's a really good counter to the the one snake-looking dragon that I always forget the name of. That's almost everywhere now because he's S tier. But I mean, overall, it's just got crazy crazy good resist chart except for stuns and sleeps. So. You know, when I was making this team initially, I was like, oh, I'll just slam Holy Warder and Hard Warder on everything, and I don't have to worry about Sleep and Stun, but no, it, their resistances still suck. 
But yeah, so it basically he just spams selflessness. And then I might try a few games with the Ripped Rabbit again, but it did not perform how I was hoping it would. It's... The idea here was very similar to... to this guy, the hard-boiled exoskeleton. Is that it's just kind of a counter to status monsters, to stuff like the, the, the purple rabbit. Because it has the traits... Nope, not that. Agent of Chaos. So if it get hits, gets hit with a confusion, then it'll always attack an enemy, and it will always crit, which can be huge damage. Critical Triumph, which is just a general easier chance to get critical hits, and then Strangely Alluring, which is just a once in a while get a stun on an opponent if they didn't spec their stats right. Since it has really nice natural resist to stun and sleep, I actually have 150 sleep resist, so I'm completely immune to sleep, and a decent resist to stun as well, as well as decent uh, explosion and some other, I guess just explosion and dark resist mainly. <laughs> but you know, we take what we can get. This, then that's mainly from Holy Order. I have Nuisance for the a secondary in this Ultra Insomniac, because they do stack. And there's not a whole lot of traits with Insomniac at all. And then Supernaturalist is just for the Ultra Granite Chin and also to give me an attacking option in Multi Persecutor. Which is also, once again, isn't great. But it's it's something. Also have the option of Warcry just in case my opponents didn't spec correctly. But most people do have hard, at least hard warder on stuff. Just to start out today, we'll we'll try a couple with the rabbit just because just because that was what I was planning on doing initially when I made the team and I was talking about it yesterday. I'll throw us in a quick fire contest to start. Also, I didn't mention it, but the sparkle. Sparkle on the rabbit and the exoskeleton are both in defense, which is pretty good. I mean, since the rip rabbit is more like a counter monster, I figured it, was, it would be nice to have a defensive sparkle on it. And I mean, obviously the exoskeleton's a tank. I, I would have preferred HP because HP gives you more survivability against spells, just because you can't reduce the damage of spells, but you can just have more HP to survive them. <laughs> Uh, but defense is alright too, there's plenty of physical threats in the game. We'll just skip through this little animation here. Looks like we got four losses. Getting some nice seeds there. Always appreciate that in these. So this one looks like a meta team. I'm a little surprised we lost this one, I want to check this one out. My guess is that my... My team was just spamming Kakraggle, when the bird here is actually really weak to dark. So if my guy used Kazamal on it, it would have been more valuable to do that. He did use Kazamal, but he used it on the wrong target. Oh, never mind, it still did 999 damage. He must also have a dark weakness. I thought he wouldn't, because he looks like a dark dragon. <laughs> I must just get like wiped here by a triple flame splitter. Yeah. And that's kind of what I ran into here. Is where I, I would have a strong team, but I would just get wiped by my opponents having something better. Hustle Dance when just the last one alive. He's back to full health. And then this was another thing I ran into, where my... <laughs> My Cloud's stats were actually so far above everything else that it ended up being the last one alive almost always, and it just, I couldn't get a whole lot of benefit out of, out of its trait, unfortunately. So what I need is, I think in future iterations, is to pair is to pair it with other monsters of similar game plans. Because if I have three monsters, two small and one large, that are all relatively tanky and can each carry a game on their own, I think that would be valuable. And if they happen to kill my cloud first, then everyone gets a big buff. If they don't kill my cloud per first, then I'm sure that everything else just deals damage on its own, and the cloud still also deals damage. So. It's kind of the hope. I'll reveal my, my plans for, for 
my next team at the end of the stream. See how many games we can get in, though. Spent a little while discussing this at the start. Just because, like, I, I really enjoy the team building of the game. I, I almost enjoy the, the team building aspect more than the actual games themselves. Just because you actually get into a match, and a lot of times you have no agency over whether you win or, or lose. It's all up to complete luck. And to an extent, that's okay. It's not exactly what I'm looking for in a competitive game. But for pure enjoyment purposes, it's kind of fun. You just can't take this game too seriously, I feel like. Right, I don't have selflessness in this. Yeah, see, it's strangely alluring, gets double stun. It's, it's very unfortunate because I actually have decent stun resist on both of them. I don't know what the base chance is for, for you to get stunned on Strangely Alluring. Also worth mentioning that he got Strangely Alluring and I didn't, because I have it on my rabbit. But that's okay, I, we're still in good shape, honestly. We're gonna go Kazamel. Just because... Uh, usually, okay, he does have selflessness. I didn't know if he would for sure or not. But when there's like one target remaining, I like to go Kazamel. Like a large target, just because it does more single target damage. I did forget about the bigger upper immune damage. Paying attention to each of those is kind of tough. It's looking like Humulus is going to die. So that's pretty good. Although, unfortunately, I, I think I'm just getting lucky, where he's not getting more than one attack per turn. I hope it defaults to multi-persecutor. Another strange alien, and I'm not getting it at all. We got a Kakraggle, and we got... We proc the benefaction, so he cannot selflessness. That's very valuable here, and now I really wish I clicked Kazamble. Oh, but no, because he got that at the top of the speed order, he'll, he actually got the boost on tempo. And he casts twice. So I need my rabbit to carry now, because he's got the wind resist. No, he, does, he attacks three times, though. So it's tough. It's okay damage, but I just I haven't been dealing enough. I don't think it's gonna help. I think I need to go f like multi persecutor isn't gonna okay. <laughs> it, multi persecutor wasn't gonna do any more damage than any of the other hits. It's basically just a plain attack, but with an added effect of doing bonus damage to monsters that have. A specific status effects, which I wasn't inflicting. So using poison attack is is better just in case I could have inflicted the poison. But I got the crit anyways and won the game, so that's awesome. And I, I also had the speed boost and the attack raise from Benefaction because he did kill the cloud before anything else. So you did get to kind of see there the strength of the cloud when it does get to pull off. It's death. <laughs> Alright, so I know that the Almighty is actually slightly weak to Dark, which is nice. I'm not sh I, I don't face a whole lot of S-Darks, though. So I could just get wrecked here and not even know from what. Rando disrupts. So there goes my insta, insta ping, which is sad. I would have probably done 999 damage had it not been for that. That would have been great to take out the the Almighty because it's just it's its support. Yeah, there's two sleeps and a hustle dance. He cast disruptive wave again, probably predicting me to cast selflessness, but I didn't. But he actually woke me up on both, so that is huge. I think I might just win off of that. 
we're just gonna smack him with that again. We're actually gonna kaboom him just to make sure he goes down. We're just gonna throw as much damage as possible. Printer, hello, thank you for the follow, I really appreciate it. And not having the instant ping hurts. Come on, finish him off, please. Nice, huge. I had the kaboom to follow up too, I just didn't know if, if I would have went faster or not. I am kind of... He must have missed on one and then got the crit on something else. I thought I had desperate measures for a second, but I'm like, no, I definitely don't. <laughs> uh, once again, we're just kind of like in, in single target damage range. Just, I'm just going to use... The best move I have on everything. Just because the ammo is the best single target. I did get the sleep, even though I wasn't particularly trying to, it's just a nice little bonus. I might wake him up here. I do, I do, so that's kind of punishing, but it's okay. It's actually better that the cloud dies. Dinner, hello, welcome. How come it's in Japanese? Don't have the English version? Uh, it, I, this is the English version. Uh, his n names of his monsters are Japanese, because nicknames are enabled. So that's just what he, his are called because I'm uh, I'm facing it, a, a Japanese opponent. But if you're if you're curious what his his monsters are, the big guy that, right at the end there that was S Stark, and the other one was the Almighty. Yeah, see this, see it's in English. I promise. See, <laughs> it's just yeah. Recommend Liquid Metal Slime, Valheeb, Night Clubber, and Corvus. I mean, there's so many fun combos in this game. Liquid Metal Slime, I get. I feel like all the Metal Slimes are are very strong, just because they're purely overstated. It's like you're gambling on your opponent not having any form of crowd control because they're so vulnerable to stun and sleep or whatever, specifically stun, that it's they're so hard to play. And yet, they have the fastest Disrupt Wave in the game. I think I, I get wrecked here, by the way. I'm almost 100% I get wrecked. I haven't seen Valhim and Night Club used before, though. Corvus is pretty popular. I really like seeing Corvus. My Dragon Quest IX was my favorite Dragon Quest uh, main series game, so I got a soft spot for him. <laughs> I gotta somehow hope the Kakragle and the Kaboom will take stuff out, which is just not gonna happen. Oh, he's faster than me even after my Benefactor boost. That's crazy. Liquid Metal Slime, your selflessness, or only Greek Gnome. Dual and triple. I don't doubt it. I'm not trying to just purely win. I I, I said it a little bit earlier, but I, what I really love is the, the team building aspect of this game. I think it's so fun to just come up with, with creative ideas rather than pure, pure meta spam. Because if I really just wanted to win games, I'd probably throw a Bodkin Archer on the team and some random carry, whether it's Serpent of the Scales, or the uh, snake, I really should remember the name of Snake Dragon guy with the explosion spam. When was slime good? Yeah, I, I don't doubt that. I know slime is good. I'm just personally not a fan of playing something that's so strong. I, I like trying to find something creative that's that you you never see. And that's why I'm kind of running a team like this. I, I've seen a couple Sorrows pawns around, but usually they're large size. Oh, we got to do the rabbit <laughs> shenanigans. It's probably not going to work at all, but uh, it'll be at least fun to try.
From par, hello, welcome. Large size not recommended in high elo. That's actually kind of surprising. But I guess most... Uh, I would assume most people in really high elo just go for... The... Uh, the like four smalls just try and out damage and finish off your opponent instantly. Strategies. Stuff with the Dragon Rider from last match. And I'm actually not else sure what else. I, th I know that the... Check out one of them. Critical... Nice! Huge crit. Wow, that was awesome. Uh, what, was some, what was the other monster? I'm trying to think. Oh, the Komodo. The Komodo was really a popular small for a while, I think. Four man team pink beat class mode. I mean, I, I don't honestly know too much about the meta of this game. I, I look at tier lists sometimes. I... I know what I face all the time in my matches and what I completely struggle against no matter what team I play. I'm sure that once you get up into like Platinum ELO, it, it just changes completely. And I, honestly, I don't think I have to worry about that. Appreciate the follow, by the way. Yeah, like th this is this is a kind of a team that I'm not sure if I stand any chance against. And I'm sure, like, yeah, if I run a, a liquid metal slime with, with disruption, what is the multi? Disruption wave to stop the selflessness, and then have something to just completely nuke the dragon. Then it would be awesome. But uh, that's just not something I, I really. Uh, I'm inclined to, to use right now. Metal Kid, hello, welcome. Alright, that's that's actually really good to get on the rabbit. It's just kind of my fodder monster. Last Gasp is still kind of a pain, though. And I'm going to get ruined here, just because I have those negative electric resists. This is not the team I want to I wanna face with these monsters. I need to, to revamp the team and remove some of the electric weeks. I ripped the rabbit. Oh man, it's getting bullied. <laughs> so bad. Uh, how am I doing tonight? I'm I'm doing good. I'm, I mean, this is just the second game of the night, but I I've I've been enjoying this team. It just it, being able to have some amount of success with a team that I just completely came up with. Lost me. It, it's actually really cool. Rather than looking at top builds for everything, like, I don't. I don't even mind losing that one. I know that you're gonna have losing matchups with no matter, no matter what team you run. That's what I've noticed. So just trying to minimize how many matchups you lose, I think, is important. And I, I, I feel like running elemental resists is is really good, but I, I don't know how that fares in in like higher elos. Crazy selflessness is really strong. Your opponent has a strong team. Oh, Scruffy on the last team? Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah, the problem is here, I don't have enough stun resist to probably survive the damsel fly. Oh, that's you? That's hilarious. Uh, well, I think you got me here, but good luck, have fun regardless. <laughs> ah, if I could have gotten a good stun there, I think it would have been okay. It's, well, neither of us get one, so it's, it's fair. And then you get two there. Yeah. A Damselfly is very strong. I haven't seen the Tyrannoceratops, though. I'm curious what it, it does. It's probably going to ruin my team, but that's okay. Alright. 
So this actually works for me, because now my Cloud died. So when I actually get a Reflect spell on myself, it's not too bad, because I can actually die faster. Ah, there's the self assist. I was afraid you were gonna stun again, so I made a different plan. Got a nice kaboomal there, but once again, a uh, spell reflect takes me down. Ooh, and I can't avoid the wave of panic either. Pain. I think this takes me out anyways. No, I actually would have lived. Oh, three attacks. Seems like you got all the elemental slashes. Kind of curious what that thing does. Good game. Your team is far more consistent than mine, it looks like. Two really solid supports. Cool running indie. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of the, like, I thought this game was going to be a lot more popular, but it's definitely been not super... Not super popular. So it's kind of nice having, or being able to actually speak with the people you play against. I always love that in games. Check out what this thing does even. Rando buff, big bully, and strong starter. It was large too. Tactical genius, critical is much easier to, okay. So that's kind of fun. I like that. Try Metal Kids website is a bit more forgiving than Game 8. I will have to look into that for sure. I just, I ended up just using Game 8 for a while because it was on the top of the, top of the search engine. Dragon Quest Monsters Metal Kid. We'll just pull it up now so the next time I have to reference it. Alright, so it's a team full of small stuff. I, this is kind of like the, the small nuker team that I think is, is very strong. It's kind of like what mine wants to do, but his is better. <laughs> I don't have a stealth assist on my team, so I can't even eat, eat any hits here. I just... I'm just gonna get destroyed. I even get stunned from the Ice Age. I don't think it matters, because I'm just gonna... Actually, I actually lived. Momentarily. <laughs> See, this this is also the reason why I'm surprised that you say uh, small teams are, are strong. Because I just got wiped in one turn. But I feel like if you're running a small team, you have to have more damage than your opponents. You have to kill them faster than they kill you. I feel like there's no other way around it. Because even if you get a... A personal grudge off in that match, it doesn't matter because there's not a second turn. I don't think I'm completely understated. Like I, I don't know how much more like a little bit of HP and defense would really make in that match. Beginner rank four. He's got two two medals though, which that worries me a little. I'm not sure what he's going to do, he's going to disruptive wave, selflessness, or maybe if this is just a story team. <laughs> yeah, I've really fallen in rank. I, I think I ended off the last video with Silver 3. But I definitely played too many games with this team with a negative win rate. <laughs> Based on the moves he's clicking, it definitely feels like a story team, but it could very well lose. Yeah, maybe not. It, I, I thought that his, his Atlas was going to be stronger, but it does not seem to be. Oh, 
another random ping, which is nice. This one should do, yeah, good damage. He's doing better damage, though. Zing doesn't really matter. Okay, critical kaboom, well, I needed that. Yeah. I have magical moments, so the more damage I take, the higher my crit chance goes. So it's not like that was complete luck. It's kind of the plan, is to take a couple hits on him and then nuke. But that one could have been very bad if I didn't get the crit there. Probably a couple more matches, then I'll swap out the rabbit for the exoskeleton. Just to switch things up. Now, this is another surf of those scales, though. I feel like I lose every every matchup against these just because I have the double electric weakness. I really should have planned that better. I mean, I can get double Kukraggle off, which is valuable. And both the Cloud and the Rabbit have good electric resists. But... Really? You got the major downer on the... That, that hurts. That really, really hurts. Oh wait. I thought I got spells prevented. How did I just cast Kraggle? What? It must have been something else prevented on him. I mean, I just... Since I have impact, or I do have those options, but my attack is like zero, so it's painful. Why did it go on to you? I don't understand. We got an Agent of Chaos proc, which is kind of cool, so can't be too mad about that. It's really sad that even if the, the monster that casts a spell dies from Personal Grudge, that it still passes on to somebody else. I think that's something that should be changed. Like, if there's already very little counterplay to Personal Grudge, but that should not happen, in my opinion. Ah, uh, and okay, this is something else that bothers me. <laughs> Running at me. I... I shouldn't wait two seconds in queue to face the same person. Like, if I was in queue for, like, even 30 seconds, and I matched the same guy, okay, that's fair. But th that was, like, two seconds. Blue Steel, hello, welcome. Off top, just found out Chromion lives plus five chain hit from Anatan. <laughs> Did you happen to be facing it? I got spells prevented again. And he keeps getting the debil- I don't think I'm weak debilitating-wise, but maybe I am way more than I thought. I mean, Anatan's attack is very low. And I've seen a few people running it with, like, next to no attack recently, too. So that also feels kind of bad. So it's not super surprising that Chromion lives, but... At the same time, Chromion's physical defense is trash. And then it goes on to him instead. Like, at least go on to the Tem that's... Or the, the monster that's dead and silenced. <laughs> ah, magic burst to finish me off. Shame. Magic... Like, lost. So I've learned recently that most of the selflessness supports are running the Empath tree which has Magic Burst in it. So what they can do is, if you're facing an opponent that is spamming selflessness, you can just click Magic Burst first, have Auto Restore probably on the accessory, I can't say for sure, but I'm assuming it's on the accessory. And then since selflessness only costs five MP, you can just spam selflessness for the rest of the game. And your opponent no longer has selflessness as an option. So that's kind of cool. But at the same time, I'm just gonna get some light resist. <laughs> and then all of a sudden that strategy kind of goes downhill. Ah, man, but so many serpentine skills in a row. I should, like, 
wait a second before I queue up for the next match. Maybe they'll all pass and I can face something else. Notice the teams in this game have different quantities of monsters. Higher rarity or power monster take up more slots. It's the size of the monster. So you'll see next to the monster there's an S or an L. I can't, I don't think you guys can see my mouse. Maybe you can. But it's, it's like, you can have four slots on your team. A large monster takes up two of those slots. So you could either have two large monsters, two smalls and a large, or four smalls. Those are the three combinations possible. The Kraggle kills that guy, personal grudge goes on to him again. He does zero anything now. Multi-persecutor. I knew it. I was like, I, I was, okay, I didn't think they were going to die. I'm like, if I get a double crit, I can win. <laughs> and then somehow I still won anyways. The uh, the crit Kakraggle that I got before before Sorrow's Pawn went down was clutch. Critical Theorist coming in handy. And so we're going we're gonna to try and switch things up now. We're going to just swap out the rabbit since I actually have a fifth monster to, to try on the team. So this will give me a little bit more survivability, but also a little less damage. So it's kind of a trade-off. So that last match, I don't know if I would have lived. But also I probably would have been able to get two sets of Kakragles off, which would have been nice as well. You know, the funny thing is, most of these are different players. We we faced, our last three matches were all against different players running practically the same team. Just because that's how, that's how this team works. Maybe he won't click selflessness? <laughs> or Warcry? And he, di he didn't click Warcry. He, he clicked, he, uh, yeah, Magic Burst instead. So there's me getting new command magic first. Yeah. Being electric weak just hurts way too bad with this team. Way too bad. But like the cloud actually doesn't take almost any damage, which is nice. But now since Kakraggle goes off, and apparently Kakraggle is like before the turn even starts, so the speed tempo from Benefaction still goes on to it. It's so weird. I don't really understand how that works, but... You know. Oh, that's funny. He actually... <laughs> uh, even though he got revived, his command still went through. Anything stopping two large monsters from curb stomping four small monsters? Oh. Um, RNG. RNG is, is a big one. So, large monsters... Oh, that's not a win. What am I doing? Large monsters, most of them have a trait that can attack anywhere from one to three times. So if you only attack one time, you're all of a sudden getting half value on your team. Also, large monsters only have about 50%, I want to say, more HP than small monsters. So you basically have 1.5 HP on one monster for a potential to attack one extra time. Otherwise, you can. there's very few monsters, but there's some that consistently attack two times and some that can attack two times consistently and even sometimes three. I don't know what his plan is here. I, I know that the War Tortoise is like a, a really super tank. But the Rose Vine, I, I'm not familiar with. Aspire Reflect, I forgot. That's okay, though. Green Breath. 
last fight and you go to sleep too. Toxel. Oh, is it Poison Stall Team? I like that. Uh, so much for that. Oh, he doesn't, like, do any damage at all. Is he not invested? a wave of panic since I don't want to wake him up or hit myself. It was Kazamul, just because it's better single target damage. He got earth resist anyways. Nice on both of them, that's huge. Hustle dance. That kind of hurts. Aw, oh, I need to get out the way of my little ball. Well. The AI feels kind of OP in this game, honestly. It just always makes the right decisions for you. I'm still asleep even though he's not. He got like a turn one wake. Just lucky for him. Maybe I should have kaboomed him just to try and take out the stupid close line. Even though he already poisoned me, so the damage is already done. At this point, I'm just hoping to let the cloud die. He's getting such huge heals, and he attacked three times. <laughs> He's literally max health again. He has not gotten anything less than six heals on his Hustle Dance yet. It can be anywhere from two to six procs, and he has not gotten anything less than six. He also, for the record, has... Oh, there's my first critical spell. That's, that's nice at least. He still has bounce up, somehow. I should have used selflessness, but honestly, I don't think I would have survived if I did. I think also has hustle dance. See, but it only got one proc there. This is still like so impossible, though. I, I finally knocked that thing out, but it's too late. What kind of moveset does this thing have that it has so, such high resist? Auto restore. A... He must have zero stun resist or something. I don't know how you can not spec into stun resist. I guess, no, he took zero damage from the crag. So he must have hard water, rainmaker, lost me, and charge leader. I'm not sure. So, something with electric storm for some reason. That seems like a really odd slot to have. I think I would have stood a better chance if he had something other than the Electra Storm slot. But alas. He opted for that. He must be vulnerable to sleep then. Also, him having five turns on the bounce sucked. Uh, that, that, that match was just kind of unlucky, I think. I, I appreciate a more creative team, though. Much better than this. Much, much better than this. The guy on the left with all the weapons is typically like a sleep spammer. Unlucky random disrupt. I feel like that always activates whenever possible, even though it's supposed to only be like a 20% chance of doing so. He's got uh, wind resist on that thing. Wind 
resist is holy water, I think. Yeah, but see, now my team's able to live a second turn. See, and the AI is smart, because it w instead of casting Electric Storm again, use the single target electric move in order to not wake me up. I took the one out. It's funny, it actually failed because I had sleep on me. But Last Gasp still allows him to use his move in the turn. Which is kind of also a broken mechanic in my opinion. Oh, I say this game is it feels like it's relatively close to being pretty darn good competitively. But there's so many things that would would just help the competitive experience that it just doesn't have. I would love if this game got some uh like frequent balance patches, but so far nothing seems to indicate that. Nobody I ask seems to know <laughs> anything definitively. If anything it, it looks relatively grim. Uh because like it's not a live service game. Which against the same guy. Let's see what I can do. I guess it's just self resist again. I mean, they did have the one patch that nerfed Warcry, which was nice and gives me some amount of hope. But so many, I, I feel like the crowd they're they're reaching towards actually enjoys a highly RNG-based battle system, and that's not. Wow, I got a crit. No paralyze. But because of, of all the luck factors they have, the, I just don't think this game ever will have a anything remotely similar to a competitive scene. We'll see what happens here. I'm hoping the Kaboom will... Like, Hoping the Kaboom will takes out the pink guy again. Ah, uh, okay, he got stunned. To get his selflessness off again. At least he attacked uh, the pawn. Yeah, but now I just died from the electric storms. Personal grudge is too strong. I can't believe that made it through. It's like one. It, it's it's interesting because when you look at the competitive scene, or like the the top tier monsters, it's actually the things that have the least amount of RNG that are top tier, which isn't surprising. It, it's just it's surprising that the developers would choose to have so many RNG mechanics in the game, only for the only monsters to actually be used are ones that don't have any or very limited RNG. It makes you wonder if the the audience that they made the game for, or if, if they really know what, what, what that audience is and who they, what they want. I mean, it's, it's, it's like where Enix made the game. They know what they're doing, but sometimes I wonder. <laughs> Alright. Ice Resist, I think I have decent of across the team, honestly. We're gonna cast Bounce on myself instead of Selflessness. If for nothing else, then a potential to smack him back with his own ice attack. 
because I'm, I'm faster. It chances to cast random relief or uh, relief wave or whatever is pretty low. And you also wonder, like, he casts Omni, uh, Omni Heal on his own. Omni Heal was not the right play there. But his AI cast Hustle Dance, which was 100% the right play. So once again, a win for the AI. Sadness for me. Now that I have Bounce Up, I can Selflessness. And unless he has a uh, Disruption Wave, I will be in good shape. I should be faster with the time being to just move the Almighty. Critical didn't matter, I did 999 anyways. Which is the damage cap in the game. Now nah, I just slowly chip this guy down. He is using Ice Age instead of Crackle. And now the AI uses Crackle because my bouncer is dead. I know that this guy absorbs dark because of the mistakes that I've made in other games. I don't know if, how he fares against fire though. Ah, he's just dead to the Kerkrago from last turn, so GG. You know, it's kind of funny, we haven't run into any of the... the snake guys. I should just look up the thing's name real quick, just because I keep referencing it or in queue anyways. Lap Dragon, that's what it is. Stupid Flap Dragon. Yeah, see I actually like facing this guy again. Because <laughs> I won. <laughs> oh man, that's great. And yet I like facing a variety of teams too. <laughs> We're gonna go for Gobstop for predicting him to use Ice Age again. <laughs> Gobstopper prevents breath attacks by the way, and Ice Age is a breath attack. So it'd be kinda of funny if we can pull it off. I don't think it has a real high chance of happening, and I certainly don't have an increased chance for it. He goes to the random disrupt here, so rip my Oh, well, he gets the random disrupt, which gets rid of my instant ping, so I do less damage to the Almighty, which hurts. Nice, we got it! <laughs> ah, that's great, I love that. Guess for the Hustle Dance, it all goes on him, that's just fine. And he gets a luckier one there. He gets the attack up, though, that doesn't help him. Alright, and now we cast Bounce, because then he'll he'll either be hitting himself, or he'll be doing nothing. Because he'll have to use his like, physical attack stat, which is zero. He's really slow though, like, my, my team is not fast. Okay. So he's, he's just... I'm not sure what kind of skill trees this guy has. It's very strange. Maybe that's actually this thing's innate skill tree that has Big Bang and Electric Storm for some reason. I wouldn't think it is, but it could be. see what he does. I absorb explosions. Ah, okay. I just outspeed and kill him anyways. Better safe than sorry, though. Yeah, I, I absorb explosions if they don't have Ultra Crafty Banger. Huh. He almost certainly does not. Off. So he would have had to spam Electric Storm, which I also have good electric resists. In fact, I think I'm immune if he doesn't have Ultra Crafty again. So yeah, that one was just... I think every time I face that guy, I win. I don't think there's anything he can do. He would have to not get prevented from... 
my Gobstopper on his breath attack. And then he would have to get a multiple stun with Ice Age, I think. That would be the only way he wins. This one's gonna be tough. I don't know if I stand a chance here. He's going for the riskier, but high, high risk, high reward payoff strategy, and I'm going for the lower risk, low payoff. <laughs> There's no point in clicking selfishness here, really. We just, I, I didn't get to click it, so I'm gonna still. It's gonna default to selflessness. I imagine. Maybe not. What did you click? Maybe it went for like cup off or something stupid. Because I have not set to protect allies. I did go for the attack. It's, it's pedal damage, but you know, it's um. Alright, one's a crit. There's a Kaswushal because the AI knows that that's stronger against me. There's a third, and it's also a crit. Game's over. It doesn't matter. You got three hits and two crits at full health. Turn one. I mean, that's kind of why I like the thing. You just instantly win games, but it's also extremely frustrating when you lose for the same reasons. Because you just stand no chance. And he's got personal grudge coming for me, too. Right there. Not that it matters. Because I just get wiped. Because the crit it removes all resistance you have. So even though I actually have hard warder on like all of them, which gives crag resist, it doesn't matter because my earth resist is zero when I get crit like that. I need a new strategy. And then it also does the bonus damage on top of it, so. Uh, for that team, what I what I really need is would be crowd control, like or disruptive wave. Because if you can get rid of his insta ping and his selflessness and then stun him, he always loses that. 100 percent of the time. Like, and, and that does uh, that's just kinda why I stopped running it. I, I feel like one of the best strategies is to have like a small sized metal slime, whether it's a, just a normal metal liquid or king even. Any of them will do, they're all overstated. But you just have one of them with insane speed and spam disru disruptive wave as the first thing that happens in the match. So you get rid of all of this garbage, the agility up, the reflect spells, any selflessness casts. And uh, then from there, you're just able to actually target whoever you want. But instead, I have to deal with the... I can kind of avoid the self-assist by using Kraggle, and that's always my hope. I was going to almost cast Bounce there, but this is, this is okay too. It doesn't matter, because I think, yeah, the Komodo goes first and just ruins me. Oh, I actually survived. It's a spell reflect. Oh, he went for Kabuff. I just, just realized. Almost could have gone for Gobstopper. Could have at least given it a try. He's going for stuns. He got one. I don't know what the stun chance on that is, but it's kind of, kind of insane that they have stun chance on something that's already ridiculously strong. Uh, I gotta hope I survive the turn, get two Kakragles off next turn, and somehow wipe him with that. Like, it's already gonna do a lot of damage this turn. That was actually about the best case scenario. Because now I get two more Kakragles off. And even better would be if my cloud dies. It's not going to. This is why the ice type has fall kind of fallen off in this game. Because everyone and their mother is running. No! That hurts so bad, actually. I had two random pings that would have 
done damage. I might need a crit here to win. No, we got it anyways. Um, everyone's running Hard Warner, which gives primarily the stun resist, and that's why they run it. But also gives Crag resist to help these good Craggle strategies, and also uh, Crack resist for the ice ice counter. Because during like the first season of the game, because apparently there's seasons, the, the ice type was by far the most popular, just with Crystalinda and Zoma being the top two carries in the game. At least that's what it seemed like. And then as people, then they had like the mini update, which allows you to get some of the water scrolls from the online shop. So it was much, much easier to manage those and just put them on every single monster that you own. They also made getting them from eggs easier if you don't want to grind for the gold. This was kind of interesting. I'm actually not sure what the zombie, the skeleton guy on the right does. At all. So safe play is just a selflessness. And hopefully kill the almighty on turn two. And if he's like a status inducer, I'll be able to counter him with tit for tat on the exoskeleton. If he's a, a damager, I could be toast. Earth Splitter, that's not good. Got Slick Skin though, which ain't bad. Alright. It ate two hits, and this guy's actually attacking for some reason. See, like, the AI heals, because the AI knows that it should be healing. And <laughs> but, for some reason, some of these players, they just enter attacks. I think I have to just go for the kill here, because... This guy could very well ruin me. This skeleton. He also definitely has hard order. 100%. Based on how much damage he didn't take there. Come on! Ooh, it's gonna be close. I just need one thing to survive. Any one thing. Come on, you got this. Cloud. No. It's actually kind of funny. The cloud is actually weak to wind. Because, you know, clouds can get blown in the wind. At least that's what I'm assuming. Yeah, I think it's the only type it's weak to. I kind of want to check that. So the fact that the AI, once again, is using Sky Splitter hurts significantly. Because even though you don't give that info out of what traits and trees you have, the AI knows exactly what you have and will always click the best offensive move in, in that situation. So it knows that I'm weak to wind. as literally the only element in the game that I'm weak to on this guy. Not that my dark resist is anything, really, but I, I'm straight up weak to wind. The AI knows that and will will click Sky Splitter specifically. So that's highly unfortunate. <sighs> Not much you can do there, though. It's actually kind of funny. If he didn't click Electro, Electric Storm on the first turn, I think I would have won there. Because I would have had enough health. I wonder if he, he kind of knows that his combo of four hits from the skeleton doesn't kill something. Also, that thing was really tanky. I feel like it had, it definitely had over 2,000 HP. I wonder if he got like an HP sparkle on it, and then the HP, extra four percent HP from the stats as well. I don't know, it just seemed really crazy. Maybe it just has naturally high HP. I'm not super familiar with it. We're facing four smalls here. Not super familiar with what all of them do. In fact, I, the only one I've seen is Crystalinda. I think I've seen the, the green fat alien looking thing too. I don't know much about it though. We'll just click selflessness and hope for the best. He's faster, that's good info. Special. Good decent damage. I could probably wipe him turn two if I survive. I take that just fine. This I don't. I can live this. No, it's done. Nice. Alright, I think I win. Goku Swooshal. 
Kabumo. Kabumo. So the reason I, I'm going Kabumo instead of Kakraggle on the second turn is because Kakraggle always hits on the the turn afterwards. So if I don't want to die and I just want to finish stuff off, because usually they, they've had a barrage of three of my hits on turn two anyways. So being able to finish them off at low health with Kabumo is super valuable. Because I do have... Especially when I have speed advantage. So like taking advantage of the speed when you have it is good. But there's stuff that can change speed. Like if I get hit with a personal grudge, then all of a sudden my speed goes down a lot. If my opponent gets a benefaction, then his speed goes up. Stuff like that. Same guy. I, I think this one's just kind of like an easy win. Because no matter what, I think I can live anything from the green thing, and then Crystal Linda always one shots the egg. Or at least whatever's left of it, and then I kind of just wipe his team. I don't know if there's any other way this this match goes. Kind of interesting to see the guy on the right in 3D though. Like he's always a monster I see in the Dragon Quest games that I I never really know anything about. <laughs> I I don't go super in depth and look up monsters typically. I mean I, I do for the, mon the Dragon Quest monsters games, but it's interesting. He did kind of switch things up, but now I've just taken extra hit. Cause like I've never seen this guy in 3D. I've always seen him as kind of like. 2D on the, the DS. I didn't know he was like a merman looking thing. Oh, I still go to Swishel. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He just dies again. That's one of those matchups. This team just kind of always wins. And yet it's also a, te uh, a kind of team that I could lose if I was running the Cetacean Sorcerer. Because if I didn't get two Kakraggles in that match, I could very well lose because my opponents could get two hits off. I guess I had a speed advantage. I kind of wonder if his team isn't like level 100 or maybe it wasn't fully maxed out in stats if he didn't pass down his, his stats right. That's the thing again! What? I've, I've literally never seen this thing before that last match. And now we see it twice in a row. That's insane. I'm going to have to look up what this thing does afterwards. I don't even, I don't know what rarity it is, I don't know what it's called, I think it's like a Magus. Magus, something Magus. We'll play the guessing game afterwards. We'll try and deal with this thing now. It's large this time though, so it, it might perform a lot better. It's still slow though. Good damage. Zapple, I can take that. Okay, so it has Ultra Crafty Zapper at the very least. And this thing does not have Ultra Crafty Zapper. Because otherwise, Cloud would have taken damage. And now we Kaboom will just to finish stuff off. The other thing you have to worry about with one thing with Kaboomal is does your opponent have Okay that that does that sucks, but I think we still got it. Definitely got it. Magical moment kicking in. Alright, is if your opponent has bounce up, because Kaboomo can get bounced, but Kakrago cannot. Alright. Alright, now excuse me while I pull up the internet. We're going to try out the Metal Kids site. I was recommended this. I don't even know how it works. Oh my goodness. I might just have to figure this out off stream. So we're just going to go to the more annoying ad spamming website since I don't have an ad blocker. Magus. Mm, no. Probably a, a demon. I don't know much beyond that. Uh, 
Is it? I don't think it's the Rector. Maybe it's Argon. Okay. So there's the Ultra Crafties app. It's got so it's got two like support Ultra Crafties and then one offensive one. And then it gets another. So this thing is looks like it's designed to be a big support. It's actually a a triple question mark family. I thought this thing was like a common mob. It's, wisdom's not even as high as I'd expect it to be. It, it does have tactical commander though, so it always performs two actions. So I guess it's, it's consistent at least. I don't know. I don't think it seems that good. I guess that's kind of why I haven't seen it around. Like, Bedazzle and S Spellbinder, like, Silence, they're, they're, they rarely get used. Because you can't get them on the target you want to, ever. They just always go on to the selflessness spammer. And half the time they get bounced, too, if you're facing the Bodkin Archer. But also, like, if you could get it off, I suppose it would be really really punishing. So maybe if you pair it with a... Oh, this is tough. I don't think he'll use magic burst. Nice. Uh, maybe if you pair it with... With the whatever it's called, random or the like disrupt user, disruptive wave. That way you could prevent the selflessness and the bounce, and then be threatening that way. You could pull it off. Okay. AI coming in clutch again. That's the exact same combo he got last time against me. He got the triple attack, double crit. Oh no, I stand corrected. He got economist, which also was a crit. Yeah, I don't win that. I wonder, I, I'm curious what, what the chance on Critical Mastermind is. Because that thing has Critical Mastermind, which is just a much, makes it much easier to cast critical hits. Or critical spells. And it feels like when it's at full health, it's just relying on that chance. So I gotta assume it's like 30 or 40%. Because out of four attacks there, three of them are crits. Double selflessness. Good to see the bone dragon though, you don't see that often. It's got tit for tat just like my my egg. Which it's like, ooh, double crit for me. Finally, something. So good luck. Wait, which will transfer a status ailment if it gets hit with one. But I don't have a status team. He probably doesn't even know what my team does, to be fair. I'm gonna just go for a... A wipe. Please, no last gasp. Ah! Chance on that's too high. I need, I need Kaswushal to do work now. Mom. Alright, alright, I'll take it, I'll take it. I can finish it off at this health. I, I, I take no damage from Electric Hardly. Got like huge assist. It, it can't have very much health left anyway, so I'd probably kill it here. That is not what I wanted to see. I can take this, but he's the AI knows. Usually, the AI knows better. He must have every other action turned off. But man, that's that's. I think that's the first frenzy of the day. But it, it was a completely free match. He had no way to kill me, and then he gets the frenzy on the win. Unfortunate. I need a new strategy. Unfortunate.
Another reason to have disruptive wave. I guess you probably gotta have it. It just kind of sucks because if you're running disruptive wave, there's no great defensive or supportive skill trees to run with it. Like you can't run it on a, a stat boosting skill tree. It doesn't come with any of the the ward skill trees. It's on some of like the high tier exclusive ones, and you can get it in combination with I think either Rando Panic or Rando Relief. So it's not bad that way. Actually, there's two larges, so we're gonna go with the Xamel instead. Um, shoot. We're gonna try and solve this. this. I know that Nocturnus is just kind of like a bulky physical attacker, really. Nice! That's huge, slick skin. Wave of relief. What did he think I was going to do? I guess it's just to prevent stuns or something. He only attacked once, though, which is really valuable. Because Amel didn't do anything hardly to the bird, so we're going to Kaboom instead. Learning the type charts in this game would be valuable. <laughs> I, I don't know everything this stat weaknesses, because there's like 10 types and everything can change their weaknesses or strengths based on whatever stats they're running. I almost got desperate measures. That really works against me here. But we got we got the, the damage dealer. I can just take as much time as I want killing the bird. I don't really care. It looks like a fully dedicated support. He might just forfeit here. Let's try Kaboomal. If it's not a critical hit, and see how much it does. We'll just use attack to chip it down. Oh, he might get a frenzy. I bet he's gonna get a frenzy. Yeah. I feel like the more outnumbered you are, the higher the chance of getting a frenzy is. I don't know that, but it just feels like it. I can't even crit him for extra damage here because he's got desperate measures. So there's a very high chance that he wins now, purely because he got that, that frenzy. Because he gets to attack four times there, deal twice as much damage, and take half as much. And he just hustle danced for like 800 health. And I cannot crit him either. Because it's so... Did I use Kaboom? So that is two games in a row that I have lost due to a frenzy. Uh, and honestly, that's one of the worst feelings in the game. When you have a well-crafted team, and you beat somebody else's team, and you just... Uh, there's probably some people screaming at me like, Just spam defend! I mean, it's really... Like, it... I just die here, and like, every single crit... Of course, I, I get a a frenzy, but I, I defended that turn. And so I have Magical Momo, which increases my ch crit chance on him. Alright. If I'm gonna win, it's gonna be now, somehow. Now he's healing. It's not too bad. That's not great. I don't know where he's at health-wise, I wasn't keeping track. I don't know how much max health he's got either. Well, I don't have enough stamina to win. Or MP. Alright, Cloud, can you punch it to death? Is it that low? <laughs> I got another frenzy. It got slick skin. No! We're about both out of, of MP. He's got Auto Restore, which is probably going to save him, because he's just got that much more healing and I don't have the MP, even with the Frenzy. Kind of crazy that I got a double Frenzy, but he got the more important one. Yeah. Oh, he does have MP left. He's just messing around. 
Dang. Alright, he got another frenzy just for fun, too. That's tough. That is tough. Yeah, like, a late game frenzy is hard to deal with, because even if you have a disruptive wave user, they'd have to be alive by the time your opponent gets the frenzy. And you either have to, one, predict the turn that the frenzy happens, or you'd have to... Or you'd have to survive the turn that they have the frenzy, and then frenzy them next time. Or a disruptive wave them next time. You don't see the fungus very often. I think it's like an ultra crafty paralyzer or poisoner, maybe even debilitator. I don't know. It's some debuffer, basically. So it should be a little bit of a different game. I see King Metal Slime, and the first thing I think is disruptive wave. Go, oh, I didn't get to click balance. I put too much time thinking. Random disrupt, so rip my rip my insta ping. There's a disruptive wave. I didn't have anything else though, because he got the rando one. It was actually a good waste of a turn though. I did cast balance. I had my cursor over it, and I guess it just defaulted. Oh man, quad sleep. I know my team's weak to sleep, but yikes. Oh, this will be exciting. It's just... I'm not... We'll get to see what... He probably doesn't want to attack me, because then I'm going to wake up. Would I have anything? Oh, he got the sobering slap. Ah, uh, first the bridge missed, because I'm already sleeping. Oh, dang. So it it really does do damage. Like, that's a ton more damage when your opponent's asleep. I really underestimated that. Oh, and it attacked three times when it mattered. That last one sucked. It's a really interesting strategy. Did not think it would work so well. I, I needed to click selflessness. No, I couldn't because I got disruptive waves. It's a horrible frenzy. It does nothing for me. Getting a frenzy on a support feels awful. I went for fizzle instead of disruptive wave at least. But it doesn't matter. Maybe it does. I don't think so though. He <sighs> actually just cancelled out my turn. Ah, feels bad. That was the AI again though. The AI knows that I only get one attack and it's gonna craggle and it's gonna hit next turn. So he can protect himself from it. Disruptive wave. Gobstopper to protect prevent his sweet breath. I couldn't prevent the Hustle Dance, though. I wonder if he's just setting it on, like, constant AI auto-attacks, because he knows that that's just gonna have more success. My Frenzy is now over. Interesting. Okay, that, that's at least good info I didn't know about. So I got stunned or slept by his trait by attacking him, but that doesn't count for tit for tat. I, I knew it didn't work for like personal grudge because stun isn't a status effect, but I didn't know it also didn't work for sleeping traits. So that is valuable information. Me? 
that I will probably forget the next time that I could be in that situation. Well, we're still at, like, rock bottom as far as rank goes, but I'm actually kind of having fun with this team. I mean, it's just, if you if you remove some of those, like, painful, <laughs> painful frenzy losses, and if I can figure out a better matchup in the circuit of the scales by changing some things up, I think that there's a lot of potential here. So it's good to at least figure out what I am strong and weak against and go from there. I don't know what he's gonna do here. Is the Almighty gonna use? Like, I, that's not Fuzzy or Scruffy over there. I don't know the blue one. I don't know what the blue one does. Vodkin Archers is usually a support. And the Almighty is just weird. It's a it's a good crit crit craggle. Withering look. a bit painful, but that's okay. Get stunned there. No other stuns. Alive too, but that doesn't matter too much. I'll just die to the next spread move. Won't get another selfless to soft, which is a little bit unfortunate, but also I don't think it matters too much. It would have been nice to avoid the next withering look or whatever this thing dishes out, but I still think I'm alright. It's almost okay if I take damage because then I'll be in magical moment range. Alright, I knocked this thing out actually, so benefaction. And he's gone. I think is trying to stack benefactions maybe. Yeah, I think it got knocked out, it was always going to. Another spell reflect. It's like he's just waiting for me to knock myself out. Just kind of whatever, I'm gonna chip him. If he's not healing himself, that doesn't count. <laughs> if he's not healing himself, I still I still got him here. He might see that the, the cloud is low and try and finish it off. Which isn't that bad of a plan. Nice. Um but also, like, I have Benefaction on it, so it'll help me significantly. Yeah. I mean, he just, he had a, a team that looked like it was designed to just stay alive, but he didn't have any way to deal damage, it didn't seem like. Like, you can spend all day oomphling with your Bodkin Archer, but if you don't actually attack, it's, it's useless. And oomphle doesn't boost stuff like Withering Look or... Hellish Owl. It just boosts physical attacks, and those are like level up damage based attacks. Ah, this one I'm toast. I can try though. No reason to give up. Never know, maybe he's highly under leveled and his team just looks scary. Like he just took the. Top tiers from a website and he's using those. Like, there's no reason that thing should have used Sandy Psy. And this thing didn't use selflessness either. So, see, this is why you don't give up. Especially when you're Bronze Four. <laughs> Pain. Ouch. Alright, we gotta, we gotta go for the Kaboomles now. Nice, nice, nice. Alright. Please no selflessness. Please no selflessness. Nice. Okay, he attacked for some. Right, that mechanic. I think I'm still okay. This thing has... Took zero damage. The explosion. Okay, I guess I'm not okay. Sad. Does that thing naturally have 50 speed, speed resist? Or uh, explosion resist? Is 
There's not a whole lot of monsters that have good explosion resist. It seems to be a rare rare stat. It it does naturally have fifty. So he has he has holy warder on it, which isn't surprising. It, it's good for most selflessness monsters so that they don't get put to sleep. It's very unfortunate for me in that situation. I should have I should have clicked Kazamel. There's no reason I shouldn't have. Absolutely zero reason. Serpent of the Scales is even weak to dark. That's something I gotta get better at. It's choosing which spells I click better rather than just being like, ooh, this one does lots of damage. No, I, I gotta actually put some thought into it and just ignore that this thing has bounce. This is a tough selflessness, honestly. It's double selflessness, but I'm probably just gonna die to the whatever attack that the Uber killing uses. Or Crystal Linda, even. It's very strong. It's a nice, very nice critical for Craggle. Oh, I lived. Huge. That... <laughs> okay, I was like... I was a little bit worried there, but we got it. Snooze me all you want. I'll take a nap. You can take one too. I should be able to live this onslaught, and then... I don't think he'll be able to take me out in time. Yeah, look at all that damage. Freaking Fraggle is just absolutely nuts. Brightest Rain doesn't activate until the second turn. If you're gonna spam Giga Cross, you should try out the uh, Overkilling Machine instead, buddy. Since this thing has bounce, I basically have to keep spamming it. Right. Fraggle, because I can't really break through it otherwise. Okay, nice. I didn't have to play around the Frenzy game, which is nice. I was a little bit worried that we were going to get swept up again in <laughs> another Frenzy. But at least we can crit the, the Gold Slime. I like the Mecha Mina. Or whatever the white one's called. No, not again. <laughs> uh, we'll probably just go to 20 or 30 matches today. So just this one, and then we'll do like one more. Call it there. 30 matches is pretty good, I'd say. Still can't do that, buddy. Now that you use selfishness, it's way more important for me. I guess he was intentionally trying to put me to sleep so he can get the electric storm on my electric leaks. If I live on a sliver, no. Oh, maybe on Sorrow Spawn. Nice, huge. entirely. Yeah, unfortunate to get the grudge. I really would have rather had it on the... Oh, it doesn't matter because you could last gasp on a Kakrago kill and then still get a selflessness off. So now any chance I had is just gone. Hey! <laughs> he did like pedal damage. I'll take it. We'll pedal him now. Fight me. Fear me and my frenzy that I'm about to get. The random oomph is, is actually kind of nice for a support. Like, I got... 
think I had like two stages of it now. If only he was using his attack stat, I'd be in good shape. He always attacks two times too, so I, I, it's not like I can be like, oh, you only gotta attack once. We got pretty nuts stats all around on this thing. I'm just gonna try and take out the Serpent to the Scales somehow. If I can take it out here. Oh, I did get the Frenzy. Nice, that, yeah. That, I didn't have to worry about the Damselfly afterwards. So that's that's a Frenzy win for me. I think I, I think it would have been close regardless. It, because the, the Damselfly would not have been able to do anything to me. And I outsped it. Because of the Benefaction boost. <laughs> so it would have just been a matter of would my attack on the dragon kill? And then does the Damselfly have any sort of offensive tree? Because if it had Empath and it just used Magic Burst, I would have died. 100%. But if it had just like attacks... And that's, that's it, then I probably would have been toast. Another King Metal, so that's probably going to be a disruptive wave, unfortunately. But also doesn't look like he's going to have a Selflessness user. We're going to try... No, he had Selflessness. No! No! I, I definitely could have gone for Selflessness myself and just destroyed... I Electric and... Explosions for breakfast on this thing. Unfortunately, Big Bang, it actually, it's not a spell, and it's a skill, and it, so it completely goes through defense. And but uses your attack stats, so I didn't stand any chance there. I had to guess it. I had to use selflessness and just hope that I didn't get disruptive waves. That was literally my only hope. I mean, I can take good hits on the... Tidal Wave. So he let the AI choose his move there. Because he knew... Because my Exoskeleton is actually weak to water. But it eats explosions. There's no way he would have clicked Tidal Wave intentionally. Sometimes I wonder if those people just don't turn the moves off. Because in, in a general situation, you wouldn't want to click Tidal Wave. But I guess you're, the AI probably wouldn't, unless it's specifically good against, against the team. I just put that one as a win again. I wonder how many times I did that. <laughs> I probably... You know, going 13 and 17 and still dropping uh, like a full rank, I definitely was mistyped some things. Oopsie. Ah, Alright, well... That was right. That was that was an alright stream. It wasn't it wasn't fantastic. I, I I like some parts of the team, I don't like others. I think I'm going to bring back Cumulus at some point. Let me pull up the internet again. Just uh the wiki. So the two monsters I'm planning on doing in pair with the with Cumulus next time. One of them is going to be the Traminator, but it's going to be a small size. Primarily because it has... Man, where's the resist chart? Alright. If I knew how to use this one better, I would. Control F. Yeah, see, it's not... Okay, I guess it's there. Uh, resistances. Okay, here we go. So it's, it's got a 75% resist to light and a 50% to electricity and ice. And there's also a tree called Charge Leader, which gives you both light and electric resist. And also it gives a Giga Gash and Giga Slash or whatever the, the two are. So you can have... You can have that that crazy good resist with with Zapmeister. I guess it's probably up here as well. Yeah, with Zapmeister, 
and an attacking impulse. So the whole goal is, once again, is to actually not run selflessness. I might still have selflessness. I'm, I'm not sure yet. But is to be able to take damage and also dish it out a ton. And Traumanator is like perfect for that. Unfortunately, it has one of the lowest HP stats in the entire game. But with, with these three traits together, I think it's pretty nuts. We're going to give it a try at least. And then along with that, we are going to try a large Macho Pichu. Because... It gets unhealthy advantage, which is once again, in, the more damage I take, the more damage I deal. Critical moment, which is basically the same thing as magical moment, except it's for physical hits. And it's also got the, it's tied for the highest attack stat in the game. Strong starter as well. So essentially my, my whole plan is to nuke my opponents and just to kind of allow my monsters to die. Because I'm hoping that if something on my team does die, that I still have enough damage to... Alright, that I dealt enough damage that whatever's alive can still deal with it. If the cloud dies first, then everything gets a benefaction boost. If Traumanator dies first, honestly, who cares? And if Macho Pichu dies first, then I'm probably doomed anyways. <laughs> uh, but it's not like Traumanator and uh, Cumulus' damage are to be underestimated. So... That's kind of the, the plan, it's what I'm hoping for. Whether it'll go that well or not is to be determined. But yes, that is going to be all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, once again, I'm probably just gonna, I'm gonna try and stick to Dragon Quests on Wednesdays. I, it takes me like a full week to make a team, so I can't have it too much more often than that. But if I do get the team ready and I'm in the mood for some Dragon Quests, I'll try and get a, a stream outside of just Wednesday, but just just plan on Wednesdays for now. So if anyone wants to tune in on Twitch, you, we'd gladly welcome you here. So thank you all so much for, for stopping by, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.